Hi, and welcome to Screens in Focus, the podcast where we talk about TV and movies. I'm Diana, and today we are talking about Daryl Dixon, The Book of Carol, Episode 3. Renee is back to join me. Hi, Renee. How are you doing? Hello. I'm doing well. How about you? I'm great. I'm so excited. We are at the halfway mark. It's kind of crazy that we're here already. Oh, I'm like, how can we only have three more to go? I know it. Oh, man. But, you know, in thinking about our question of the day, something kind of popped out to me in the midst of this or actually toward the end. And I'm going to pose this question and then I'll explain it a little bit more later. And then we're going to answer this later on. So the question of the day is, how do you think a loss would affect Daryl this season? So, Renee, you're going to think about that. And we're going to have a discussion about everything that happened in this episode. And then we're going to revisit this. But friends out there, think about that. Think about Daryl and how a loss would impact him. So in episode three, we started with a flashback. We learned more about Janae. And also we see Carol at Maison Mare. And then we see Daryl and Isabel fight for protecting Laurent Mm -hmm. and all while realizing the extent that all these enemies of theirs, these villains are willing to go to, to control and have power. So in this episode, Renee, I would love to know like what struck you, what caught your attention? Well, of course, learning more about Janae was very interesting because we see this woman, how she is now. So it was very interesting to see how she was before the outbreak or right at the onset of the outbreak. And so I I always enjoy those stories and seeing how people, you know, what they did before and then how they even going into the outbreak, how they, you know, what they were at that point. So yeah, I thought that was really interesting. And I thought it was funny too, because you start to feel a bit of sympathy for her. Then you realize, wait a minute, (laughs) realize who we're talking about, what she's doing now. So I thought that was kind of interesting. I also was very curious how a janitor became this leader of this movement. That was not to say that janitors can't do wonderful things. It's just where she was to now, that's a huge change of occupation. (laughs) So I wonder if we'll learn more about how that actually came to be or not. But anyway, that really stuck out to me because I'm thinking, how did she get to that point? Especially as broken as we saw her at the end, you know, after losing her husband and stuff. And then I, you know, I, so far, I think this episode has been the best of the three that we've seen so far. This to me felt more like season one of the series, you know, a lot of the action, seeing all, you know, getting Carol and Daryl back into their fighting mode and all those things. But yeah. I, I just, I think those were the ones that, the, you know, her story and then all the action and everything are the things that stood up the most to me, I think. I love flashbacks so much. So I'm so glad that you brought this up because I think it just is so informative and we get to see these glimpses. And I remember you saying previously, you liked seeing the onset Mm -hmm. of how things came to be. And I love that too. And it is interesting to see how did she get from a janitor to now? And it made me think of other people and characters. There was another character in The Walking Dead that somebody said, and I don't know, it probably wasn't Daryl, but it was somebody that they were just a regular person, but now they were not powerful or anything, but they were living something, a different role than they had previously lived. Mm -hmm. And it also made me think of Negan too, right? Because he was a coach yeah, at high teacher school. Era. Yeah, co- yeah, he just yeah. coached and gym teacher, wasn't he? Gym teacher too. Yeah, yeah gym teacher, yeah. 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 But that's, yeah, like a gym teacher, and then he became Megan. Mm-hmm. So, you know, people just change their roles from yeah. who they were to who are they now. So it'll be interesting to see. And I thought they might give just a little bit more as to why Janae was from there yeah. to here, but we... we I mean, we know she suffered a big, huge loss, Mm -hmm. and I knew that was going to happen. I'm like, Mm -hmm. oh, my gosh. Especially with the glass and everything, we're like, and then when he was running up at the very beginning, I'm like, he's going to get eaten. He's Mm going to get eaten. They're going to come behind him. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. I felt 
And I felt for her and I felt for him. And I'm thinking, oh, these poor people. Mm -hmm. And she looked great. Even mm -hmm. as a janitor, she looked amazing. <laughs> I know. I was like, like oh, she's so pretty. Yeah, she's, she's, so yeah pretty. she's very lovely. Yeah. So that was fun to see her so, in that. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, in watching this, I think one of the highlights for me was something actually that you brought up last week okay so it's carol lying mm -hmm. <laughs> so i know it's not good i know in regular life i don't like it when people lie i don't like liars at all like at <laughs> all but here and with carol i'm like i'm loving her lies just <laughs> it just comes out of her mouth so really and she's so good at it and I, my mouth is like hanging and I'm like Carol Carol this is so good you're so good at it I'm thinking oh my gosh she's telling the truth she's telling the truth and then all of a sudden this big fat lie comes out and I'm like oh my god she is a genius yeah she's genius and see so, I don't mind when she lies to the bad guys I'm fine with that yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. when she lies to Ash that that's what makes yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but man, oh man. So that to me was, I was excited to see her <laughs> just adapt and, you know, tell her lies and her truths and yeah. whatever else. But I thought that, that that was something that stood out to me that I enjoyed seeing. So again, we have like two places that mm -hmm. everything is happening at. We have the ceremony at the nest and then we have, you know, Carol's mission at Maison Mare which what do you want to talk about what stuck out to you i'll start with the nest because i think that they're all losing their minds at that place i tell you you know from our first introduction to this nice community that just you know thinks this little boy is going to do something miraculous to this whole twisted you know it's like yeah. what's happening how did that how did i go from that but then you know, then they turn on daryl and his, and his group and then and then sylvie and you know, I, I mean, then, then they want to have this child bit to prove that he's whatever they think he is kind of thing. I mean, it, it's, they're just losing their mind. So, of course, that is was just kind of crazy how that had morphed into something completely different than when we were first introduced. And then, you know, Sylvie, all oh, that was just heartbreaking because I really liked her. But I knew, I could tell, like, you know what's coming kind of thing. Yeah. And, but I like how they showed despite what everybody else was doing, she still held to her beliefs. She prayed for strength. She prayed for that courage to do whatever she had to do to say, you know, and I, she literally meant do whatever she had to do to try to save it. Even if it brought her death, she was willing to do yeah. that because, you know, she, I don't think bought into their craziness, but she still felt that he was destined for something special. And so I liked seeing that little story for her just to show her bravery and, and willingness to, to die for her friend if need be you know and i was shocked <laughs> but i guess not so surprised then that they used her walker as <laughs> the in the ceremony because <laughs> it was like how again twisted is this group to do right oh, gosh, you know so you know i think i think it's just one of those things where low things true colors have just finally begun to show and you know whatever is twisted and whoever I, Still wonder is there another master puppeteer involved in this somebody like above them maybe not but it, i just feel like maybe there is someone else pulling the strings there yeah oh and then yeah for him to even to drug laurent you know he's like here take tea it'll make you real i'm like dude <laughs> you're drugging a child what are you doing <laughs> i didn't understand that because wouldn't you think that would you know, inhibit him. Like if you really be believe everything that you're saying and you want him to live, right? Mm -hmm. Because if something happens to him, that's like devastating. So why do you think giving him something is going to help your cause? I don't yeah, understand I, that part. Unless yeah, he didn't, didn't want him to fight, but then you're still yeah. not helping your cause. If you yeah, can't I, use all his wits about him. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I didn't understand that either. I was going to look up, he said, it's has something in it. I was yeah. going to look that up and I forgot to just yeah. what that, what the, you know, effects of it or it would be. And then, you, then yes. Yeah, so he, go ahead. Were you saying? No, I was going to ask you, do you think Laurent knew what was going to happen? Like the actual, that he, they were actually going to have 
a walker bite him? Do you think he knew that? Because I, I did it, but then I wasn't sure. I don't think so. I don't think that was ever okay. explained to him. They kept talking about the ceremony and I, I don't think so because I think he was, you know, you couldn't tell, I guess the shock I think was of seeing Sylvie, but was it also shock of seeing a walker come at him? You know, I, I didn't know yeah. when, when, he, when they take her hood off. If it I'm was sure it's Sylvie, right? Yeah. Because this is what are your caretakers? Someone that yeah. you cared about. Yeah. So he could have been shocked about both that, oh no, this is what they're planning on doing. I don't, yeah, I wasn't, I, but I don't think he was ever told that's what they were doing. It's just the ceremony because he said, take it in and bask in, I forget how he, how low saying worded that to Laurent. He said, you know, this will help you relax and just make sure when you're there, you just take it all in and, you know, like kind of like, but he didn't tell him what was happening. So yeah. Mm -hmm. But anyway, low saying, yeah, like I said, he's just, yeah, his true color just came out. Now, you know, now he wants to torture Daryl and Isabel to get the information he needs to, to locate him, Laurent. But again, I'm like, okay, so are you still going to try to, why do you want him now? Because are you still going to try to go through the ceremony? You know, like it failed and everybody sees and it's just odd. Like why still wants him to do this, you know? And so anyways, yeah, I thought the whole nest was just crazy. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it was. <laughs> and yes, I agree with you on Sylvie. I, we knew something could yeah. happen to her. We didn't want it. We're like, no, <laughs> please don't have anything happen to her. But you're right. She went out with all her beliefs. She still prayed for him and mm -hmm. and wanted everything to go well. And I love how mm -hmm. she's the one who was searching for him. Uh, oh, I loved all the fighting. I thought it was so cool. <laughs> when they finally got in yeah although i kept saying you're not shooting him in the head you know because i talked about this last week too i'm like can you shoot somebody can you shoot him in the head because i'm thinking there's still people here that you care about not everybody i think is on the same page maybe they are but still now this whole beautiful place is going to be full of walkers because once you kill them they're going to turn yeah. into you know uh, or all the people are going to turn into walkers. So I kept, I don't know why that's always in the back of my brain. Shoot them in the head, shoot them in the head. Yeah. They won't, they keep just shooting at, you know, them, <laughs> Whatever. their bodies. Yeah. <laughs> wherever it is. Well, I, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but thinking about what happens in the next episode, who's to say what's going to be left. They better yeah. not ruin this beautiful place. <laughs> you know? know? Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Place. So I, I, I don't know, but Oh, where Carol's at, man. She's working her, you know, working her way through there. And it's it's just great to 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 see her. And she sees what they are doing on these on the research end and what these, which I love because right, she this gets her caught up to speed, right? One, you get to see, oh, Janae is doing this with all mm -hmm. her people, and then she sees what the result is. You don't have to learn through like the way Daryl had to learn yeah. it just by seeing and fighting and and, and, <laughs> and such. But she gets a, a speed course through mm -hmm. learning yeah. about it. So I thought that that was pretty cool. And then, of course, she makes a friend who ends up betraying her mm -hmm. because he's trying to save his husband, which, mm -hmm. okay, makes sense. But I hate it when people betray our people. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> But also, like we had talked about last week, how Cadrone is the one who gives yeah. her the information that she needs. But it was interesting. I also wanted to bring up, because we had talked about Janae's backstory, mm -hmm. but also that scene where they show that one guy who throws his food on the floor. Yeah. Because he's not being very nice to the people that served him. And no. of course she can relate because she used to mop the floors. And she's like, <laughs> oh, I know what it's like when you have somebody who disrespects you and your job yeah. and what you're trying to do. And so she makes him eat off the floor. <laughs> and I'm thinking, one, Carol's all, oh, you're this woman. Okay, I know what I need to contend with. But also, you know, in a way protecting that, not protecting, but, you know, seeing the side of that, yeah. that server. Uh, of you know seeing that and just kind of exerting her muscle here of what she can do and it was interesting that the woman that was in her backstory is now like her right-hand woman yeah. I guess mm -hmm. right yeah so 
that was yeah, yeah that was interesting the something you meant oh the one thing I thought was really cool too is when Jenna, she shakes his hand and they're going to part they pan out and you see Carol kind of has a smirk on her face that's pretty much mirrored of Mona Lisa and I feel like it was kind of like a thing with Janae saying that she looks like somebody who's withholding something that, that the Mona Lisa Mona Lisa looks like she's someone withholding something almost alluding to like yeah that she knows Carol's not telling her everything or, or something so I thought that was really cool how they did that <laughs> oh I know that you know that Janae she is so like she's too smart for her britches you know <laughs> yeah she can read people whatever else has gone on in her life she can read people for sure <laughs> yeah well it's funny because I had seen or I think they played it in part of the trailer remember how you and I were talking about how she figured out that Cadrone was the person or knew had let go Daryl mm -hmm. and the others mm -hmm. and because she and they showed it they showed in one of the trailers that she says I can tell by your eyes or people's eyes if they're telling the truth or not it was kind of the recap, so, wasn't it? Yeah, the, the, yeah, the, episode, like the recap so. kind of thing, yeah. So it was like perfect, because I'm like, yeah. that's exactly what I needed to hear, because that's what I wanted <laughs> to know. Yeah. And it, yeah, and then it made me think about Carol, too. It's like, oh, shoot, she can't. But Carol's so good. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it's just that she knows that people can be not always tell the truth. People can be manipulative mm -hmm. and you know, just trying to stay one step ahead. You know, I'm really curious as what is going to be her her downfall because we mm -hmm. know there's something, right? Okay. There's always something about some, mm -hmm. somebody cares about some, you know, right. someone or something. Uh, you know, what's that going to be? Because I don't know that we've quite put our finger on that yet. It'll be interesting to, to keep moving forward to see what happens, mm -hmm. but... It was kind of cool seeing Carol trying to get on that horse. And I thought to myself, when she went over to the cars and you saw the three horses in the background, I'm like, Carol, get the horse. And then she goes over to him and she picks the tallest one. Yeah. I'm like, get the tallest horse. And then when she goes down that area, I don't know what it is, kind of a tunnel. I'm mm -hmm. thinking she's going to hit her head. She's going <laughs> to knock herself off that horse. <laughs> but um, I wondered how that was filming it like mm -hmm. you know being a, a, the actress that she is yeah. like, getting on that horse and writing it down that that yeah. tunnel of sorts I just I, I would love to see how that happened and how mm -hmm. it came about how it went and what she thought and the horses and all that so yeah I wonder how much uh, she actually did her first stunt double does most of it yeah you right. know it'd be yeah it would be interesting to see all that one thing yeah. you said was something that reminded I think you know Carol and Janae are kind of alike because they're both very powerful women. They both have endured a lot of loss and they kind of both are good at manipulating and, you know, kind of reading people and knowing more than you think they do kind of thing, you know? So, I mean, they're very right. different. They're very different in a lot of aspects, but like some of the, they do have a lot of similarities as well. That kind of makes them good opponents, I guess. <laughs> yeah adversaries i don't know yeah there you go yeah um yeah all right so there were there's always themes throughout all of these uh seasons and episodes and so did you see any themes that stuck out to you i i go back to sylvie because i just i just liked her you know i know she wasn't any powerful plot line or anything but it was just, she was just sweet and she was loyal and all these things so you know for me with her it was her sacrifice you know she I saw her with her, you know, being sacrificial, doing whatever she had to do because she believed that Laurent was destined to something great, you know, what, whatever yeah. that is. I don't think, I don't think she had a, maybe a preconceived notion of what that was though. She just knew everyone thought he had something and she believed that and wanted to believe yeah. that. But I loved her that I saw that sacrifice in her. Um, of course we see survival with Daryl and Carol. They're both fighting again for survival. Carol pretty much for her own self to find Daryl. And Daryl, you know, he's got all these people that he's got to help try to protect with, you know, Isabel yeah. and Laurent and Fayou and all that kind of stuff. And then I saw, I liked the faith because I saw 
you know, Sylvie with her faith that God would assist her in whatever ways she needed to, whatever she needed yeah. to do. And she laid that out and was faithful there. And then Laurent put his faith in Lo Sang's beliefs, you know, yeah. he, he believes I'm something special. He even mentioned they kind of liked feeling, yeah. that, you know, which you, as a little, a young boy, yes, you, who, you know, who wouldn't like to feel special. And then we also see that Janae, she puts her faith in the science of everything. And she thinks that scientists can figure out ways to create this army for her and that she's going to be able to control it, <laughs> which <laughs> that will be interesting to see how it goes. So, yeah. So those were some of the themes I thought were, you kind of stood out to me. Yeah, those are good ones. <laughs> I saw all of those too. And I also saw the leadership styles that everybody has here. Mm -hmm. So with Lasang. <laughs> delusions of <laughs> leadership because he sees himself as a savior he really does and you know he does believe that Laurent is the divine power but he really wants to use that yeah. and so he leads the nest with this warped sense of superiority and it's shown through what he does with Sylvie. I mean, mm -hmm. that is like crazy. I mean, he really does believe himself because you think about it. Okay. We had to kill her. Oh, let's use her. He's gone off the deep end. He really has. And that's what power does to a lot of people. They oh, go yeah. off the deep end. And then with Janae, it's, you know, she's so calculated in mm -hmm. everything that she does. And like you had said, she uses science and, you know, manipulation to gain mm -hmm. power with experimenting on these walkers. And she's also very cold and she's very strategic. And that's why I'm wondering, like, what's going mm -hmm. to bring her down unless it's that? Because sometimes yeah. you, you know, you want power so bad that you just keep, you, you get blinded by everything mm -hmm. else. And then that is what ends up bringing you down. And so, yes, Carol and Janae might have some things in common, but with Carol, she is doing all this and she has this bold leadership, but it's because she cares about people. Mm -hmm. That is why she does it. That's what motivates her. She's not trying to be a leader just mm -hmm. for ambition's sake. She's doing it because she cares about Daryl. Yeah. I mean, I was thinking about it. It's so funny. I was driving home and my brain is thinking about Carol came all this way for Daryl. If he, if, when he better jump up and down for joy when he sees her, because can you, who else does this? Yeah. Who else does this? This is a long way. Of course, Michonne did it for Rick too, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, it's just that power of love that just mm -hmm. keeps you going, looking for these people. And then with Daryl, it's interesting because at first I thought Daryl was um, kind of a reluctant leader, but I think that's what he used to be. Mm -hmm. I think he it has changed, especially with the series. I feel like he's more adaptive. And, and I think he's that because he tends to step up a lot more. He will step up to protect and he will be a fighter when he needs to be and he will be a leader when he has to be and so you know he's just up for whatever the challenge is mm -hmm. and one of the things that i loved about daryl on the walking dead series was that he always adapted to whatever group he was in they always mm -hmm. ended up really embracing him bringing him in and he just you know adapted and mm -hmm. it's funny because mm -hmm. carol does the same thing they're two different people. They kind of have different approaches, but they still both do the same thing. They're both mm -hmm. so adaptive. So, I, you know, I just, I just love that mm -hmm. about them. So that was the theme that I saw. Yeah. Did you have any other thoughts about this episode? So, you know, you kind of just still wonder about Daryl and Isabel and their little blossomy romance. You know, I don't know if this is like a big lasting thing, but I feel that at this moment, they both need someone and, I mean, obviously fondness there is, you know, or it wouldn't be where it's at, you know, with the kiss and things like that, kisses. And uh, I feel like, yeah, it'll be, it'll just be interesting to see where that evolves and stuff. And so I, I thought that was a really sweet moment with them, you know, putting out their hands and telling the story. And so I, I really liked that. It was tender. And I, you know, it's like, I've never been one that feels like Daryl has to have a relationship with somebody. I've always been like, he's kind of just his own guy. 
guy and he kind of loves everybody and that kind of thing. And I've always liked that about Daryl. And so I've never really wanted him to be with anyone just because I've just felt not the right person. And again, I don't know if Isabel's the right person, but I just like this for him, you know, that he's found, you know, yeah. he's, you know, he's, he's gotta be just freaking out. He never even left Georgia until Red and them all went to Virginia or wherever it was. That was the first time he'd ever left Georgia. You know, he's not like this traveling um, guy, you know? And I know his life's changed a lot since then, but I just, I, I like, I like this, whatever it is for him right now with him. I really like it. And that was, that's one of my big thoughts. But another one, I'm still like, Kadron, what's going to happen with this guy? He's like half yeah. beaten to death. His fingers are missing. His eyeball, I think might be missing. I'm not sure it's missing or just injured really bad. And did... Did you hear her say, did you hear Janae say that she heard what Padron told Carol? Did I hear that? Correctly? Oh, because she I said didn't that hear that. What so you told my, know. see, I thought she said, well, my former friend told you or something like that. So I feel like she had spies listening. Well, I wondered if, okay, so we didn't talk about the ending that we saw. Because yeah. I want to bring up, God, there's so much to talk about. See, we still have so much to talk about. But, oh, okay. So when Carol tells her the lie, look, I'm, I am I want to kill Daryl Dixon. And she says, okay, come with me. We're going to go here. You know, they drop everybody off. Mm -hmm. And then Carol soon realizes, oh, shit, that, <laughs> that research guy with the syringe is here. <laughs> and he's going to be injecting people. <laughs> yes, it can't be good. So, okay, now it is revealed that she's going to, you know, she tells everybody, oh, you're, you'll be heroes because mm -hmm. basically we're all, we're going to kill you all. And then we're going to inject you guys. You're all going to become my super walkers. And, and then I think someone said to her, oh, but we haven't really quite figured out the control of this or whatever it is. So Carol's all, oh shit. And that's when she goes over to talk to Janae and Janae says, oh, I'm giving you what you want. You're going to get to kill, kill Daryl Dixon. And I'm, and Carol's all, I don't want to kill him as a walker. <laughs> my thought was at that moment, wait, did somebody tell J Janae this or is she just so wacko? She really thinks she's helping Carol. Like I had no idea, but I thought if somebody told her, it could have been that woman that was, that she ended up, that server, that mm -hmm. server person, because she kept coming over saying, we got to go, we got to go. And then Carol kept saying, trying to get information mm -hmm. out of Padrone. So maybe that person said, hey, that woman was talking to him. Yeah. But, yeah. I might have to go back and because I just, I thought, and then I didn't have time to go back to look, but I thought that she said something about what my former friend told the information my former friend told you or something and then, then I was like Wait a minute. yeah Probably so anyway did. that would explain how they got to where they were but yeah that ending was crazy oh my gosh that was so crazy but Kadron though I mean like we saw in an early trailer he was on the street you know so and I, we and when you and I had talked I think the last episode we were talking about we thought we heard him be Dixon, someone yelled Dixon, we thought it was his voice. And so I, yeah. So like, I just wonder, okay, if he's getting out of there, whose side is he going to be on, you know? And yeah, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens with him. <laughs> Are you really going to be on the side of the people that just chopped off your fingers? I don't well, know. If maybe, maybe not. But if they, know, if she has a, I mean, if she has something to hold over him, I don't know. You know, I mean, she's very manipulative and very, very powerful obviously she's making yeah, these she men do off the floor you know and with they didn't, yes. he didn't question it and he was a big guy he was like okay yeah. oh, off the floor you know so i mean yeah. well he doesn't want to well, be he's there he's yeah right he's, there, isn't he right he was right by yeah, carol yeah that carol. was him yeah, he's the one who's gonna protect carol next <laughs> week he's gonna body. he's gonna block the ball bullet so carol doesn't get hit yeah <laughs> <laughs> he's too big it won't go through him yeah <laughs> by accident but he's yeah. gonna do it anyway <laughs> He didn't volunteer for it. That's the job he has. So anyways, so yeah, Kadron just really, I feel like he's going to play an important role somewhere in here because they keep showing him and he hasn't he died. To. Yeah, I love him. I mean, I don't know him, but I like him. Yeah. yeah and I, I hope he yeah. does. Yeah. Comes on Daryl's side somehow or I don't know. Something, but, but anyway, yeah, that was, I wanted to bring him up because I just, I felt, I feel like he's going to have an important role because they keep showing him, you know, like, okay, something's going to yeah. happen with him or they would have, or he just let him die you know so yeah yeah those are my other thoughts <laughs>
<laughs> so you had asked last week about what Janae's ultimate goal mm -hmm. is. I, you may have looked it up already mm -hmm. by now, but I was looking and she actually wants to rule mm -hmm. France. And I believe she has, Char I'm bad at names, but Charles de Gaillé, is it? De Gaillé, who was a famous leader and that's her inspiration. Mm -hmm. And I think they even called it after him, they called a day. There's a day that they named after him. Mm -hmm. And then also that the reason she wants Laurent is because people are religious and she wants Laurent, who signifies hope and religion, to be right beside her to say, look, follow mm -hmm. me, because look who's sitting next to me. So that's why she wants okay. Laurent, and mm -hmm. that's why, what, why she wants to rule. And she wants to rule with these super walkers, which is not a good idea, lady. They're going <laughs> to get out. They're going to... They're going to get out of control and they were going to eat you. That's probably what it's going to be, right? Because I said, what's going to be your downfall? She's yeah. probably going to be like, oh, we got to use them. And you know what I thought was felt careless to me? Of course, there's a lot of things that are careless, yeah. right? But when they were, when Carol was watching them inject the walkers, those doctors were right there, like next to them. And it was I'm thinking, so dumb. Like, why are even riding even... a fence or something? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I thought the same oh, thing. That's crazy. <laughs> anyway, I also wanted to comment on what you were talking about, Daryl and Isabel, because I thought it was a very sweet moment. I mm -hmm. thought it was very um, nice when they were first, before they got into, uh, before they got into the nest, they were talking and she's all, um, they were talking about America or fireflies or whatever it was, yeah. I was explaining what that was. And then again, she's all just tell me something. I want to hear your voice, which mm -hmm. I thought was very sweet. I'm like, oh, that's <laughs> so romantic. <laughs> and uh, he tells her what it's like. So now we know, okay, so he wants to bring her to America. That's mm -hmm. sort of in his mind, the plan, right? So he's not like, okay, I'm going to live here now. Mm -hmm. So he knows and she knows that this is where, you know, hopefully they will end up because he says, Oh, Laurent can go to school. And yeah. she's all, what will I do there? And, and then when mm -hmm. they put their hand on the, whatever is that wall yeah. and they touch, and then he sees her hand, he goes and he touches it. <laughs> I'm like, Oh my God, <laughs> this is killing me. This is killing my heart. Very good. I'm so glad that they feel that closeness. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It just made me feel good that they could do that. And of course she says, Je t'aime. And mm -hmm. he doesn't, I'm like, and I didn't want him to say it. I'm like, don't yeah. say it. I, not, that, not that I don't want him to feel that. I just, it just wouldn't have felt quite right yet, you know? So I'm yeah. glad he very, that very back. early. Yeah. <laughs> but man, I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. But this is going to lead me to the question of the day because what I want to say here is this is the whole reason my brain was was working a little overtime for a minute when she was sitting there she seemed very either beaten down or depressed or hurt and I thought is she bit that was my mm -hmm. first reaction I don't think she is but my that my thought went mm -hmm. is she bit I'm like are they gonna show that she's bit like did something bite her because she just felt like she wasn't herself. So when she tells Daryl, tell me a story, I thought, oh my God, she's going to die. She's going to die. Seriously? And then I thought, oh, that's why they kissed because she's not going to make it. I honestly thought, maybe not right at this moment, mm -hmm. but I'm wondering, maybe she's not going to make it. And it hurt my heart for him because <laughs> I'm like, oh, Daryl, you can't lose another person. But it would almost make sense because nobody wants Daryl to be with anybody, I don't think. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not really sure how people are feeling after mm -hmm. it's been a week, you know, after it's been a week. Yeah. So I, I don't know. You might know more the pulse of what's happening out there. <laughs> so the question of the day is, how do you think a loss would affect Daryl this season. 
Hmm. I've been thinking about this the whole time, you know, because I feel like on one hand, I feel like, you know, Daryl handles loss about the same every time, you know, he, he, it, he goes off on his own, does his thing and tries to deal or do whatever, but he's in a very different state right now. He's very, I feel like he's very fragile because he's not with his family. I mean, he's never had a family till he, till the apocalypse. And then he finally finds his family, you know, and losing yeah. Rick was brutal on him. That was just brutal. And then he's betrayed by Leah, you know, <laughs> which again was just an awkward thing anyway, but it was, it happened to him. It was something he endured. And then he lost her to, you know, all the messes. And then, you know, she, you know, di or died and everything later then too. And so now, you know, he's pushed into a situation he doesn't want to be in. Nobody he knows. He has to meet all these new people. And now he's thrown into another bunch of mess with all this going on. I yeah. kind of think it, I think it would, and, and not even if, whether it be Isabel or Laurent, I think if he loses either one of them, I, or both of them, I kind of feel like that could be, uh, you know, a, I guess I don't know exactly what I think it would affect him a lot more than anything else just because of his state of mind right now, especially if it would happen before him and Carol are reunited. And then he would feel yeah. completely lost and hopeless. Yeah. So, uh. so oh my gosh. So I, I don't think, and I hope, oh my gosh, I hope not that he wouldn't lose Laurent. And he says it in the preview. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, I don't want to lose him. Mm -hmm. I don't think he would lose Laurent, but who's to say? Mm -hmm. Who's to say something could happen to the both of them? But I did think, like I said, I thought, oh my gosh, she could die. And finally, mm -hmm. he's feeling something for somebody. And he cares about them deeply. And what will that do? Of course, I'm thinking Carol's going to be there to help him through this. She's going to be there, which is going to be what at least gets him through it. If, mm -hmm. if he were to suffer a loss, this is what's going to get him through mm -hmm. it, that he has somebody there who knows him and can help carry him through it, even though he will be devastated. So... I want to bring up one more point, but I'm going to want our friends to answer this question in a minute. I want to pose it to you out there. But one thing I wanted to bring up that I was going to bring up a minute ago and I didn't when, and this is also with Daryl, cause you, you made me think about it because you said Daryl has lost a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Mind you, he lost Rick right on that bridge. He mm -hmm. was like trying to save him and he was bawling when he blew up. And mm -hmm. as far as he knows, Rick is gone. And at the season finale of The Walking Dead, he takes off to go find Rick, <laughs> right? I mean, that's what mm -hmm. he's trying to find. Well, I had read an article that said that they felt like this episode changed that, changed the canon, because he says to Isabel, I left and I don't know why. And people are questioning why he said that, because... Daryl did know why he left. So I thought that that was kind of interesting that, you know, why he said that to Isabel. Mm -hmm. And of course he tells Isabel, but I found something. Mm -hmm. I believe that's what he tells her. So anyway, I just want to put that mm -hmm. out there, <laughs> that out there, because you're right. Yeah. Daryl has lost a lot of people along the way. And, you know, here, you know, how would it affect him here? Yeah. How is he going to deal with that? It's hard to lose anybody. It's hard to lose anybody you love. So friends out there, I don't know. What do you think? You can uh, leave us a comment here on YouTube. You can reach out to us on social media. You can even call us at 669-223-8542 and let us know how you think Daryl would cope. Could he? Would he? Is Carol going to be there for him? Let us know what you think uh, because we would love to know. Okay, we are at our segment and the award goes to. So Renee, I would love to know what your what was your favorite quote, character, or moment? I love Daryl's fight scene, like you you had kind of mentioned earlier, because it was just so good to see him back in that, you know, even though it was kind of like 
they're coming at him one at a time kind of thing. It's like, okay, <laughs> how very polite of them, right? You know, kind of thing. But no, I, I just love to see him, you know, fighting and he's like finding all these different things to kill people and, you know, wrap them up in. And do, I just, yeah, I just love that whole scene and thought it was just really, really fun to watch Daryl and, and all that action again. Well, guess what mine is? <laughs> it was just so good. I know. We don't always have the same exact one, even though we love, we love the same one. But no, this is it. This mm -hmm. was it. Him in that mode, killing all those people. Mm -hmm. I thought it was so cool. And I said to my husband, as we watched it, I said, this reminds me of a video game. I said, and I want to be Daryl in this video game but no you're right it was like one person then the other mm -hmm. and you go up the stairs and you do another person and get them here and stab them and you're right get whatever you could and 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 this and that i'm like holy crap girl that's a lot of guys that you're killing left and right and up and down so <laughs> i loved seeing daryl in that mode i thought it was mm -hmm. such a cool scene so yep I and maybe next you. week they'll all rise up as walkers and help attack when Janae and everybody arrives or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> True. All right. Well, no, because then they'll probably shoot him with the damn yeah. injection. I don't know. <laughs> so what are you anticipating for next episode? Because, oh, so much happened. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Yeah, it'll just, I mean, obviously the fight, the preview shows us the fight's coming to the nest. So they're going to arrive there. And, you know, I don't understand how Janae thinks she's going to handle this army of the dead, you know, that she's bringing with her. I, I mean, maybe she has a plan, but I mean, all of their testing has proven that they are not controllable. They have to kill them immediately because they're too powerful or whatever. Yeah. But maybe, maybe since we saw that test and this one, maybe they've dialed the dose down enough that I don't know. So I, yeah, I think the next episode is going to be very, very interesting because I think, the fight's gonna it's gonna be all consuming and probably dominate the episode so it's kind of hard to know exactly what's gonna happen i'm afraid we'll probably lose some people and uh, carol i obviously will survive just know it's gonna be brutal i believe <laughs> yeah i can't even imagine if they do get the injections in those people because i was hoping that maybe the shooting would start and people would turn into you know the regular zombies or walkers i should say but if they get those that into them that's gonna be and they're out in the out yeah. on the loose that's gonna be really scary okay now this is the thing i want to know if one of those bites another person do those people become a regular walker or do they become Super, yeah, and very I, walkers. And I don't think they know because they have, I don't know that they've maybe tested that even, you know, I right, mean, maybe they right. have, I, you know, that we haven't seen, but yeah, that's a very good question because then you, <laughs> that's, it's going to be crazy because even I'm if they, scared. Yeah, exactly. It's, you know, it, yeah, it could be very interesting. And who do you think it is that lets Daryl go? Or is it going to be somebody we don't know? I almost tried to slow down that trailer and it looked mm -hmm. like somebody with like curlyish hair up to here. And I don't know who that is. I thought in one trailer, we saw that it was a little boy. I, Maybe because it was. Like I, I thought that I thought one of the early trailers or teaser trailers or whatever, way before the episode had first started, the, the season started, there was a little boy in the thing and he held the keys up. And then Daryl goes with the chain, you know, and, but maybe it was something else when they, you know, they make you think this or that, but I didn't recognize a little boy. Right. So I don't know what that meant. Yeah. So yeah, it'll be, cause I don't know who else would have access to the keys. There's nobody else. I mean, if I use a cave with Laurent, Isabel is, who knows where she's at with Lo Sang. Who else do they have? As, I mean, I don't think they have any more allies because Emil turned and was dead and Sylvie's gone and. I, I don't know who else it would be. And I don't even know yeah. if, if it is this little boy, who is this little boy? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Well, yeah. And I don't know if he's that little either, because the person looked like they were probably maybe Laurent's age-ish or mm. older, maybe. No, okay. not Maybe, sure. yeah. And I thought it could have been a, a, a young woman, but it could have been a boy. It could have been a boy. I'm not really sure. Because yeah. it was so 
fast yeah. that I could Right, it was really super quick. Know? So yeah, it'll be interesting. And, and the noise, what you just said, so that clang, when, when they show the keys and then you hear Daryl make that noise, so it's him clanging his uh I thought that it, in, I don't know if it was in the one that was at the end of this episode or if it was a teaser before, but he kind of hold that chain that's holding him to the wall. He yeah. held it up like the lock, like unlock me kind of thing. But and it again, also made a clang noise or something. Well, like, it would be the, maybe maybe the chains yeah. on the wall or yeah. whatever or together or something. Yeah. And so yeah. I can't, I guess I don't remember if that was in the preview for this next episode or if it, this was the earlier teasers that I saw him kind of like maybe unlock both. me. The look. You know? Yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, I'm really curious because, right, Daryl has to get out of these cuffs. Yeah. Carol has to get out from the being zombified. Yeah. So, you know, they're both in a predicament here. And so oh, something yeah. has to help, help them both. Isabel, oh, you know what, though? Isabel's going to get Lasang with that thing that she got with her foot. Yeah. yeah. So we know that's probably going to happen. But then... What's going to happen after that? I'm not really yeah, sure. Yeah, because it will be enough to like take him out because they released the new promo photos for the next episode, and he's standing there. Losang Lo is standing there, and he's got like you can tell he's been like in a blood skirmish. or blood, there's something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he's been in a skirmish, and whether who knows what timeline that's in. I don't. You know how they yeah. they like to give us just enough enough information to confuse us. <laughs> so I yeah. just always take. All of those promos, so the first promos, the promo images with a grain of salt, just because it's very deceiving often, oftentimes. <laughs> yeah. Yep, man. Okay, well, I'm excited. I thought this was a great episode. I was in it, and so mm -hmm. I'm loving it. It's, oh, it's so, oh my gosh, I can't believe we only have three more to go, and I, I think a lot's going to happen this next episode. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it'll be good. It'll be good to see everybody. So I'm excited. Yes. All right. That's a wrap up of episode three. We look forward to episode four. Renee, I know you're busy, but do you have any TV or movie recommendations? Well, if you've listened to any of the previous podcasts, you'll know I am very, very late to the game with two series that I'm working through. I'm lost and Game of Thrones, and I'm loving both of them. And if you've never watched them and enjoy shows, I mean, they're, they're both phenomenal. They're, you know, I, I, I can't even explain to you how good both of them are. They're just outstanding. And if you, like me, are late to the game, you can still get on board and watch them because it's very much worth it. <laughs> but that's about okay. the only good time. <laughs> well, remind me now, where are you at? What season are you in? Lost, Lost? I, what season? I think right. lost. I'm at the end of two. I'm just. I think I'm maybe on the finale, season finale I, of two, because those those seasons are long, like twenty. Oh, something. I was gonna yeah. say twenty something. Yeah. Yeah. And then Game of Thrones. I want to say mid season five ish, somewhere right in there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's yeah. <gasps> or no, you know what? So I actually, I think maybe we finished five. Now that I think, because something something crazy happened right there at the end. So I think we may have just finished five. Now that I think about it. So anyway, yeah, very good. I love it. There, I just I can't believe in Lost. I'm shocked at all the Walking Dead actors. I keep watching and I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. And so there's all these Walking Dead actors that pop up. They don't necessarily have roles. I guess one of them did, but yeah, um, yeah. So anyway, it's fun to see those faces. And of course, this was very many years ago, and everybody looks much yeah. younger. <laughs> so yeah, but yes, enjoying them immensely. <laughs> I love those shows. So yeah, I couldn't agree with you more on those. Okay. Last week, I think it was, there was an Oprah special with Riley Keough on CBS. I was so looking forward to this. I loved it because Riley Keough is Elvis's granddaughter mm -hmm. and she helped Lisa Marie finish the book because of, of mm -hmm. unfortunately Lisa Marie had passed. Mm -hmm. And so, and she was writing a, a book. And so she, when she was still living, she had asked Riley to help her finish the book. Mm -hmm. And then now that she has passed, Riley felt it was her duty to do so. So she is, you know, meeting with Oprah to discuss this. And so Oprah and Lisa Marie had been friends and they 
kidded around about being cousins because Oprah had relatives by the name of Presley. Oh, wow. So they joke, yeah, so they joke that they were cousins all the time. <laughs> and so anyway, so it was, it's only an hour. Please go look for it. It's really informative. I already love Bradley Keough from all mm -hmm. her acting that yeah. she does. And I loved her on Daisy Jones and the Six. And <laughs> so good. I know. So mm -hmm. good. Go watch it, you guys, if you haven't seen it yet. And I follow her mm -hmm. on Instagram. But just hearing her talk, she's a mom now. She's married. But she is so got it together. Mm -hmm. Like, she mm -hmm. has got it together. And she is running Graceland now. Mm -hmm. And... I just admire her. I think she's uh, really amazing. And it's so, I'm so glad because, you know, you never know how people will end up, you yeah. know, their personalities and power and money and everything mm -hmm. else. But she is so, she feels so grounded to me. And so this was a great special. So go check that out. I'm continuing to watch Tulsa King, which is season two. It's on Paramount Plus. This is with Sylvester Stallone. It's a great series. And so I wasn't sure if I had mentioned it. So I just wanted to bring it up because mm -hmm. I just watched an episode last night. It was good. I'm I loving the voice. The voice this season has two new coaches with Michael Buble, who's one of my favorite uh, artists. I love him. I saw him in concert. He's amazing. It's Christmas music. So he's he is so funny on the voice. So funny. <laughs> and then Snoop. Snoop Dogg is another judge. And I don't know Snoop Dogg personally. I'm not like personally, but what I mean is I don't know his personality that mm -hmm. well. He is hilarious and he is so smart and he is getting a lot of great artists. So it's great, this dynamic. So I just love the voice and I would say tune in if you can, because it's a great family show. I mean, mm -hmm. I love, I love it. So I'm also... I started to watch this because my son was watching and he says, Hey mom, want to sit and watch this with us? So I did. And it's I'm probably going to mess up the name. Uzumaki. It's on max. It's an anime series and it's from a manga in the late nineties. And it's about a town of people slowly going insane <laughs> over increasing obsessions over a spiral shapes. And it's funny, but after I saw this episode, which was actually pretty good, and it has great, like, Rotten Tomatoes, like, people are loving this. But what's funny is I keep seeing spirals everywhere. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, no. That's a spiral. That's a spiral. That's a spiral. So it's, it's just very interesting. But it's pretty good if you want some anime. <laughs> uh, but I saw a great movie. Actually, I saw two good movies. But I, this movie is called Kato Lake on mm -hmm. Max. It's produced by M. Night Shyamalan. It's starring Dylan O'Brien and Eliza Scanlon. I'm not going to hardly say anything because I don't want to give anything away. But it is a mystery um, it's categorized a horror. There isn't really a lot of horror in it, but it's definitely bizarre and a mystery and it's super intriguing. And I loved it. I thought it was so good. It was, it got me from the get go. Like the first couple minutes I was like there and it was great. And I loved it. And I like these type of stories. So I don't want to give anything away. It's about a, a, a guy it's been a couple of years, but he's mourning the loss of his mother and kind of investigating like what really happened to her and him and his dad are having some issues about how to handle the, after the mom has passed away. And then on the other hand, you have this young woman who's maybe co young college age and she is at odds with her mother and she has a young uh, stepsister who goes missing and she's like trying to find her. And so it's how these two stories may or may not be related. So you have to watch. So it's really, really good. And then I watched The Lonely Planet on Netflix with Laura Dern and Liam Hemsworth. And I really like this too. So this is considered a May-December romance, but I felt like it's not a rom-com. So it's not a comedy, but it is about love. And I liked it. I thought it was a, a, a good story. So I would recommend that one too. Mm -hmm. And I want to remind all of you to go 
check out our Screams in Focus. It's our Halloween series. We've been putting out episodes this month. We have three out, so please go check them out. Renee joined me in Iconic Women in Horror. There's also Mike Flanagan, Flanniverse podcast episode, and also Then and Now, and then look out next week because here we come. We're talking about zombies <laughs> and paranormal and all kinds of things. So please be sure to check out Screams in Focus because we have some horror coming to you. All right, Renee, as always, thank you, thank you, thank you. I, You are on the road and you are amazing for sitting with me <laughs> and doing this podcast episode. I appreciate you. So oh, much. thank you. I, of course, I, I didn't want to miss it. I kept thinking, I hope I'm not too tired to do it. And then I get so excited when we start talking. So it was, it was great. But no, I, it's my pleasure. I just love it whenever you ask me to help podcast with you because it's so much fun. <laughs> it is a lot of fun. And I love digging into <laughs> The Walking Dead, Daryl Dixon, everything else. So <laughs> it's great. All right. So thank you. And I hope you get some sleep and you have a good night. <laughs> thank and, you. Uh, Yes. And friends out there, we are so happy and thankful that you joined us. We hope something that we said today resonated with you, gave you a chuckle, a smile, gave you some inspiration. Please share this podcast with a friend because we would love more people in our community. And remember to go to screensinfocus.com and subscribe to stay up to date on everything. Remember to keep watching, keep exploring, and keep those screens in focus. And we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.